All right, now we've already got our post-process chain applied. So we can start editing our material and we'll be, we'll be able to see the effects in real time. So let me just uh, try to get this situated so that we can see what's going on in the background here. All right, now, right now all we've got plugged in is our scene texture sample. And all that that does is it tells it, you know, here's what you've got already. Just plug that right back in. All right. Now, just to kind of show you, I guess, a little bit, we're going to take that and multiply it by, uh, let's say, 0.5. I just want you to see what, what's going to happen here. I only apply it. You can see how it all tinted. All right, let's let's turn that back off and show you again here. You ready? All right, I really want this to be obvious. Look at that. So. All right, I'm going to show you how to make that. Um, well, first, I'm just going to show you how to make a, a simple black and white. Uh, so we've, we've got a desaturation node here. And desaturate effectively means to take the color out of something. And then the percentage, 0 will be 0% and 1 will be 100%. So 0.5 would be 50% and 0 0.05 would be 5%. So we're going to go all the way up. So it's going to be completely desaturated. And you can see there all the color is gone. Now what I'm going to do from there though is I think this is this is a really interesting shader effect here. We're going to get what's called a seal. I, I couldn't honestly pronounce it correctly, probably, but what it does is it takes any value that's put into it and rounds it up to the next whole value. So if you do it like this, then you can see everything gets rounded up to a value of 1. Okay, well, we don't really want it to do that. So instead, we're going to multiply our desaturated scene by some number and then put it through there and then divide it again by that same number and then plug that in so plug in our constant here and it needs to be something other than zero so let's try uh, let's try 20 and you can see already it's had an effect here And it doesn't look that good yet, though. So let's keep messing with this here. First, I'll just kind of show you what the different values will do. Let's make this 5 instead. All right. Now, you can see it kind of gets like a washed out look, though. So let's actually take all of this and move it back. Then let's add a power. Now, this power is just like from your, uh, you know, math class. So... We'll, we'll take the number into it and we'll take it to the to some exponent and then put that in instead a power of 1 basically means that nothing happens but let's change that to a power of say 5 again and you can see it really pushes those values to kind of the extremes if you know what I mean so those grays turn into black and the, the whites stayed pretty white though so Let's see what this looks like at 20 again, our uh, seal multiplier. And you can really see the effect here, changing it just between 5 and 20. Now let's change it all the way down to 2 and see what happens. You can see we've basically got a black and white color, and that's it. So let's push our power up and see what happens. Yeah, it's it's pretty much just a pure black and white scene, and that's it. So that gives us kind of an interesting effect, but that's not overly useful. So let's try getting that 
that seal multiplier back out to five and we'll keep our power at 20 for a minute and that looks a little bit better visually you know just a little bit more interesting so let's uh let's take our power down a little bit and just keep messing with this and see if we can get some good effects here that's looking pretty interesting So let's try 10 and 2 and see where that puts us. Alright, now this is pretty much a pure black and white shader right now. Pretty much. We can uh, we can edit this a little bit if we wanted to and just uh, you know see what else we can get. I guess let's, let's push this back up and just see. Alright. Now, that's pretty interesting, actually, visually, but you probably wouldn't want to play a whole game like that. Let's just, uh, let's add something in and see what it looks like here. You can see it, it kind of gives them a, a nice, uh, silhouette and just has a very interesting look to it. But like I said, you you really wouldn't want to play a whole game like this. So let's let's keep working on this and see what else we can do. So I'm gonna copy all of this so that I have two different versions of it, so I can play with the values some more. And what I'd like to do is try to get some of that finer detail back in. So let's let's put our power down all the way down to five and see what that looks like real quick. All right, and let's change our seal up to maybe. Now let's try 10. And you can see already we get a lot of our of our detail back. So kind of see it and we we still have kind of these extreme values though. So it's it's not the same as just pure black and white, but it's not grayscale either. It's kind of a mix in between. So it, if we take a look actually at at just what our uh at what our grayscale looked like just to compare it real quick you can see it's quite a bit different so this is just kind of the extreme version of that so and let's just uh let's try combining the two we'll use a linear interpolation node or a lerp and plug our two values into there Add a constant and plug that into the alpha. Plug these all together. Now, basically, what we're doing is you plug in our, our two different versions of the same of the same uh, setup here. But then, what you're saying is, right now, this uh, alpha has a value of zero, which means use a. So it takes just from a and plugs that in. Or you could switch this instead to one and it should just use the other version. See? But let's kind of uh, try an in-between and see what we can get. You can see like with this one, it kind of gives you, you know, even the more extreme darks but then also some of the, uh, some of the lighter. But let, let's keep trying. Let's see, see what else we can get. I'm liking that a little bit better. Let's let's keep pushing it up and see. All right, I think we're kind of to the point where I'm I'm started to like this. Now let's let's do one other thing real quick. Let's grab all of everything that we have here, move it back. We'll make another warp. We'll plug in what we have. And we'll plug in the desaturated scene, so just black and white, but it's in grayscale. Add another constant and plug this into emissive now. See what we have. Okay, so remember at zero, it's going to have a v the A value, which is what we had before. At a value of one, it's going to give us just the B value. 
So let's see if we can go somewhere in between where we have the nice extremes, but also some of the nice smaller details. Oh, going the wrong way. And now I'm starting to like it a bit better because you can really see it's it's not. You you can really see you you really get the added benefit of all three different working together. Uh, let, let's keep pushing this and see where we can get it. Because I really want the fine details to just barely become visible. And that's actually looking pretty good to me. Let's let's kind of look around here and, and see what everything looks like. Or we can even just try playing real quick and see. All right, and that's actually looking pretty interesting. So let's. All right. I just want to try something real quick. We'll, this might not work out, but we'll plug our colored version in. And now you can see, I haven't tried this before, but now you can see it has just kind of a hint of color That's that's kind of interesting as well. So let's uh, let's try messing with some of these values. And now we're really starting to get some of our color back. But then at the same time, you have kind of some of the nice extremes from our all of the, the the shaders that or all the stuff that we put together back here. And there's really, you know, a lot of a lot of different stuff you can do. Let's um, let's just try here, plugging a, plugging our our scene into a power node, and just seeing what that looks like. So we'll plug this straight back into our emissive just so we can see what it looks like. Oh, missed. All right, so at a value of one, it should just be as, this is what our original scene looks like. Let's try two. And now you can see it, it's, it's kind of starting to give us those more extreme colors here. Uh, let's, let's try five and just see what it looks like. Okay, that's probably too much now, so let's take it back down. Let's try half that. That's getting there. Let's let's plug this into our warp instead and see what this looks like. And a lot of this is just kind of experimenting and seeing what might look nice. I think this is about where I like it. I just wanted to show you then a, a different post-processing um, chain that I put together at a, at a different time. And uh, just kind of show this a little bit here. Alright, so this is the chain that I had put together previously. All right, and you can see with this one, it's pretty much what I just showed you um, in an early version of that. But I also plugged in a different um, material. You can actually chain materials together. So I've got my seal mat that I have over here. And then I also have a film grain mat 
which comes with this version of the UDK, which I'm in January right now. Um, and I, I assume that it'll be in future versions as well. So, and you can see it just kind of um, gives it a little bit of a distortion effect and um, a little bit of noise. But then you can also do some other really interesting things. Um, I've got a depth-based um, effect here for distortion. So this this material that I made previously is based on depth, and that's another really interesting thing. And that's another really interesting thing you can do. So you can see it's it's uh, it's distorted at close range, but further, it's you you don't see as much distortion. All right, I just wanted to show real quick. This is a material that's been made to make use of the of the effects that I've showed you. And it also adds a um, outline to the edges of things. And then this is the last thing. I just wanted to briefly show you this real quick. Here is um, a mesh that I have from someplace else. And um, I've imported it into the UDK. And this was actually the, uh, the mesh that I had in mind when I created this post-process effect. So you can see, here he is, he's standing in front of a candle. Kind of a dimly lit area here. And if we apply my seal post-processing, you can see how, how well he stands out with his shadows and everything. And it gives him kind of, uh, kind of a silhouette, really, um, where the, the shadows just go completely black. So, I mean, there's a lot of really interesting things you can do with post-process. Might have been kind of basic, but, I mean, you can, you can imagine there's some really amazing things you can do with it. So just go out and give it a try sometime and uh, have some fun.